Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral of five divided by the square root of 16 minus x squared times dx. And so to solve this integral, we're going to need to use the integration rule for the arc sine function or the inverse of the sine function. And the integral rule says that if we have the integral of one divided by the square root of a squared minus u squared du, where a is a constant and u is a function of x, that is equal to arc sine of u divided by a plus c. And so the reason that this rule is going to be helpful to solving this integral is that the structure of this rational function is similar to the structure of this function in this integral rule, right? We have some rational function with a square root in the denominator of some constant minus a function of x squared. All right, and so in this case, 16 is going to be our constant of a squared and x squared is going to be u squared. And so if we set those equal to each other, we have that a squared is equal to 16 and u squared is equal to x squared, then we can take the square root of both sides of these equations and we'll be able to solve for a and u, which is going to help us solve this integral. And so if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we will have that a is equal to four and if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we will have that u is equal to x. And so now that we know what a and u are equal to, we could rewrite this integral in a way that is going to more closely represent the function in this integral rule so that we know how we're going to integrate this function into the arc sine function. And so we'll start by pulling this five to the outside of the integral. And so we'll have that this is equal to five times the integral of one divided by the square root of 16, which we said is a squared, which could be represented as four squared. So we'll have four squared minus x squared. But remember, we said that x is u. And so if we were to continue on with our u substitution process here, we will take the derivative of u, and so we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of x, which is just one, and then we'll multiply both sides by dx to solve for du, and so we'll have that du is equal to dx, and so now we can replace dx in our integral with du. And so if we do that and we replace x with u, then this integral will be equal to five times the integral of one divided by the square root of four squared minus u squared times du. And so now if we compare this integral to this integration rule right here, we will have that this is equal to five times arc sine of u divided by a, which we said is four, and so we will have four, and then plus c. All right, and then there's one more thing we need to do. We just need to replace u with what we set it equal to, which was x. And so if I erase that u, we can replace it with x, and now we have the final solution to this integral. Next up, we have the integral of one divided by three plus four x squared dx. And for this example, we're going to need to use a different integration rule for a different inverse trigonometric function. In this case, we're looking at arctangent or the inverse of the tangent function. And so the reason we need to use this integration rule for this integral is because the structure of this rational function is very similar to the function in the integral of our integration rule, right? We have one divided by a constant plus some function of x squared. Right, so in this case, a squared is equal to three and u squared is equal to four x squared. And so if we wanna figure out what our values of a and u are, we just have to take the square root of both sides of our equations. And so if we do that, we'll have that a is equal to the square root of three and u is equal to the square root of four, which is two times the square root of x squared, which is just x. And so now using those values, we can rewrite this integral to more accurately represent the integral in our integration rule. So we can see how we're going to solve this integral and get an arc tangent function. And so what I mean is that this will be equal to the integral of one divided by the square root of three squared plus two x squared dx. Okay, so now that we have rewritten this integral, it looks a lot like the integral we have in our integration rule, but now all we have to do is rewrite our integral in terms of u by using u substitution, and then we'll be ready to use this rule. And so if we take the derivative of what we set u equal to, 
we will have du dx is equal to the derivative of 2x. And the derivative of 2x is just 2 because when you take the derivative of x to the first power, it's just equal to its coefficient. And so we'll have 2 and then we'll solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx. And so we'll have that du is equal to 2 dx. Okay, and so then whatever du is equal to, you need to make sure that that is in your integral somewhere. And so we're looking for 2 dx. However, I only see dx in our integral. And so because I do not see 2, I'm going to make an adjustment by dividing both sides by 2. And so we'll have that du divided by 2 is equal to dx. And so now we can replace dx in this integral with du divided by 2. All right, and so now we can rewrite this integral in terms of u. And so this will be equal to the integral of 1 divided by the square root of 3 squared plus u squared times du divided by 2. Okay, and so then if we clean up our work here, we can rewrite this integral by bringing this 1 half out to the front. And now we have an integral that can be integrated using this integration rule for arctangent. Okay, and so this will be equal to 1 half times 1 divided by a, right? That is the first part of this integration rule. And a is equal to the square root of 3. So we will have the square root of 3 times arctangent of u divided by a, which is the square root of 3, plus c. Okay, and so then all we have to do to finish off this solution to our integral is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is 2x. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to 1 divided by 2 square roots of 3 times arctangent of 2x divided by the square root of 3 plus c. And that is the solution to this integral. All right, so next up we have the integral of 1 divided by x times the square root of x to the fourth power minus 4 dx. And for this example, we are going to use the third and final integration rule for inverse trigonometric functions and that is for the arc secant function or the inverse of the secant function. And so the reason we're going to use this integration rule for this function is because the function in our integral is a rational function that has a similar structure to the function in the integral for this integration rule, right? We have one divided by some function of x times the square root of some function of x minus a constant. And so typically a big indicator that your function when integrated will lead to an arc secant function is when you have a function of x multiplied by a square root function in your denominator. Now that's not always going to be the case, but usually that's an indicator that you're going to want to use the integration rule for arc secant. And so let's start by setting u squared equal to our function of x inside the square root and setting a squared equal to our constant. And so we'll have a squared is equal to 4 and u squared is equal to x to the fourth power. And so if we want to solve for a and u, we'll take the square root of both sides of each equation, and so we'll have that a is equal to 2, and then we'll also have that u is equal to the square root of x to the fourth power, and that would be x squared, okay? And so let's rewrite this integral to more accurately represent our value of a and u. And so what I mean is we'll have that this is equal to the integral of 1 divided by x times the square root of x squared squared minus 2 squared dx. Right, so we replaced x to the fourth power with u squared where u is x squared, right? So we have x squared squared, which is what we have right here. And then we replaced 4 with a squared, but representing a as 2. And so we have 2 squared. But now I want you to notice something about our value of u, right? u is equal to x squared, but if you look at our integration rule, whatever u is, right, whatever that function of x is that's being squared, that also needs to be on the outside of that square root in the denominator. And so if you look at our function here, we have x squared as u, but that function of x on the outside does not match that. And so what are we going to do about this? Well, one quick fix we can do is to ask ourselves, what could we do to this x to make it x squared so that it matches up with what is being squared inside the square root function? Well, what we can do is we can multiply by a form of one of x divided by x, right? And what that's going to do for us is this x and this x multiplied together will become x squared, and then we'll just have another x in the numerator which you'll see in a second is actually going to be very helpful, 
right? So if we go through with this multiplication, our new integral will be that this is equal to the integral of x divided by x squared times the square root of x squared squared minus two squared dx. And now that function of x being multiplied by the square root in our denominator is the same as that function of x being squared inside the square root function, just like it should be when we look at our integration rule here. All right, so now this function matches up a lot better with the function in our integration rule. Okay, and so then our next step is to rewrite this integral in terms of u. And so we already know what u is equal to, right? We set u equal to x squared. And so if we continue on with the u substitution process, we'll have that du dx is equal to 2x because the derivative of x squared using the power rule will be 2x. We multiply the two down and then subtract one from the exponent. And so we have two times x to the power of one. And then if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to 2x dx. And then remember, whatever du is equal to, we need to be able to find that in our integral somewhere. And so now this is where multiplying by that form of one of x divided by x really comes in handy. Because notice that before we did that, we did not have a function of x in the numerator that we could have replaced with du, right? But now we do, right? We have this function of x and dx that can be replaced by du. However, we don't have the constant multiple of two, but that's no problem. But because we multiplied by that form of one, we now have a function and its derivative within our integral so that the u substitution process can work. And so if we divide both sides by two, we will have that du divided by two is equal to x dx. And now we have a term of du that is equal to something that we can find in our integral that it can replace. All right, and so if we clean up our work here, we can rewrite our integral in terms of u. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u times the square root of u squared minus two squared times du divided by two, right? We replace the x squared here and here with u because that's what we set it equal to. So we have u times the square root of u squared minus two squared times du divided by two, right? We replaced x times dx with du divided by two because that is what that is equal to. And so then if we clean up our work again, we can simplify this integral by pulling out this one half to the front. And now we have an integral that matches up with the integral in our integration rule. And so this will be equal to one half times one divided by a times the arc secant function. And so one divided by a will be one divided by two times the arc secant function of the absolute value of u divided by a, which is two plus c. And so to finish off this solution, all we have to do is replace u with what we set it equal to, which was x squared. And so this is equal to one half times one half, which is one fourth times arc secant of the absolute value of x squared divided by two plus c. But notice that x squared is always going to output a positive value because anything squared is positive. And so the absolute value bars are not going to be necessary. All right, and so that is the solution to this integral. Next up, we have the integral of one divided by the square root of x times the square root of one minus x dx. And so for this example, we are going to look at the structure of our function here and decide which of our three integration rules for inverse trig functions is going to apply to this integral. Okay, so in our function, we have one divided by the square root of x times the square root of one minus x. So we know for sure that we're going to be working with a square root in our denominator. And so that immediately is going to rule out using the arc tangent integration rule, right? Because there's no square root in the denominator of the function in this integration rule, right? So we can completely eliminate this arc tangent function from being in consideration to solve this integral. Okay, so now it's just between the arc sine integration rule and the arc secant integration rule. Now you might look at your function here inside the integral and see that you have this square root of x times the square root of one minus x. And so you might be led to believe that you're going to want to use the arc secant integration rule, but let's not make any conclusions yet. Let's just figure out what our values of a and u will be for this function. And so let's set our constant of one equal to a squared. 
So we will have a squared is equal to one. And let's set our function of x equal to u squared. And so we will have u squared is equal to x. Okay, and so if we solve for a and u by taking the square root of both sides of each equation, we will have that a is equal to one and u will be equal to the square root of x. Okay, and so then we can rewrite this integral to more accurately represent those values of a and u. And so we will have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by the square root of x times the square root of one squared minus the square root of x squared dx. Right, so once again, you might be tempted to believe that because u is equal to the square root of x and the function being multiplied by our square root function is the square root of x, that we would want to use the arc secant rule because we have u times the square root of u squared minus a squared. However, we haven't completed our u substitution process yet, right? We already have what u is equal to, but we haven't taken its derivative yet, right? Remember, whatever you set equal to u when using u substitution, that function's derivative needs to be somewhere within your integral so that it can be replaced by du. And this will be the nail in the coffin for the arc secant function. You're going to quickly see here that we're not gonna be able to use this rule because of the derivative of the square root of x. And let me show you why. If we take the derivative, we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of the square root of x, which remember, that can be rewritten as x to the one half power. And so if we use the power rule, we'll have one half times x to the one half power minus one, and that would be the same as the negative one half power. And so we'll have negative one half, and that is equal to one divided by two times x to the one half power, right? We can move that x with a negative exponent to the denominator so that the exponent is positive. And then we can rewrite it as the square root of x because x to the one half power is the square root of x. And now look at our derivative here. We have one divided by two times the square root of x. Now ignoring that two, look at our integral over here. This function needs to be found in this integral. And look, it's right here, we have one divided by the square root of x. And so our du term is going to eliminate that one divided by the square root of x dx. And so we cannot replace this with u, which means that we cannot use the arc secant integration rule, right? This u that needs to be multiplied by this square root function is not going to be there because it's going to be replaced by our du term. And so let me show you what I mean. Let's continue on with our u substitution process. Remember that this is equal to du dx, and if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have du is equal to one divided by two times the square root of x dx, but like we already mentioned, this two is not found in this integral, and so we'll multiply both sides by two, and that'll cancel out this two on this side, and so what we'll have is that two du is equal to one divided by the square root of x dx, and so we will have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by the square root of one squared minus u squared times two du, right? So we replaced this square root of x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced one divided by the square root of x dx with two du because that's what that was equal to. And so now look what we have left with our integral in terms of u. If we were to move this two out to the front, this would resemble this integral right here for arc sine. And so now we can eliminate the arc secant rule from being in consideration to integrate this function. And so if we clean up our work here, this will be equal to two times the integral of one divided by the square root of one squared minus u squared du, which will be equal to two times arc sine of u divided by a, which is one, plus c. And then if we replace u with what we set it equal to, the square root of x, this will be equal to two times arc sine of the square root of x divided by one, so just the square root of x, and then plus c. And that is the solution to this integral. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.